Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of C++ Crash Course. I'm Nick, of course, and uh, in this episode we're going to be talking about lambdas. Now, lambdas are something that were introduced in C++11, and what they allow you to do is to create an unnamed function uh, capable of capturing variables in scope. Uh, and we'll see what that uh, uh, what that really means uh, through an example. All right, so let's go ahead and go to our uh, standard library where we're kind of exploring things um, that have been around since C++11 and onward. Uh, and let's look at lambdas. All right, so let's. So what does that mean, right? So an unnamed function. It sounds kind of sounds kind of funky, right? And so what we'll do is we'll show this a couple different ways. There's there's a couple different ways we can. Um, make lambdas and we'll show off a couple of them here and so we'll need you know a simple struct here called building uh, for one of the examples and building will just have a string uh, that's the name of the building and then a height associated with it so again so why lambdas so lambdas give us a you know a concise way of defining a function to pass to STL algorithms now we haven't really talked about the algorithms part of the standard library but we'll go ahead and start to introduce it here, right? So we'll go ahead and include algorithm as well. So, um, and it allows us to create a function without naming it. And the reason why this can be nice is, you know, not every time do we want to uh, create, you know, a class for a specific, you know, object, and not every time do we want to say create a function if it's only going to say be used once. So lambdas allow us to, you know, kind of do that uh, in line with the rest of the code. So what's the most basic form of a lambda? So the most basic form of a lambda takes no parameters and just does something, right? And so that's what we show off here, right? So we have, you know, basically a minimal lambda and all it does is print out hello world, right? And so the actual lambda part is up to here, right? So this, um, these prints right here, that's basically just to call the lambda. And all this will do is it will just print out hello, hello lambda. So not terribly exciting, but we'll start building on this, right? So one of the neat things we can do is we can assign a lambda to a variable, right? So we'll use auto that we've seen in the uh, a couple of videos ago that, you know, it'll automatically generate, um, you know, the correct type for a specific variable. In this case, it'll be for this lambda. So in this case, we'll just assign this same lambda that prints hello lambda, but we'll assign it to a variable. And now we can call it just like we would a function. Right, so we can call print lambda. That's pretty neat. So now we have a variable that represents a function. So um, we, we can do other things though. So like a function, we can also pass parameters to it. And we can also return things. So how do we pass parameters? Well, similar to uh, a function, right? So we can have a parameter list. Uh, so in this case, this lambda that we'll assign to parameter lambda, it will take a constant string, right? That will pass by reference. So all these same kind of things apply. And then uh, this kind of funky thing after where we have an arrow and then double, this just says that this lambda will return a value and that value will be a double. So in this case, what will it do? So we'll go ahead and print out a string that we pass to it and then it will return some double value. And in, that, in this case, it's just going to be 123.456. And so again, we can call this just like a function with a parameter and a return value, which is what we do here. So we you know, declare uh, uh, a double called sum num, and then we go ahead and call, uh, we set that equal to the return of parameter lambda, and we pass it some string up here that we just, this could be anything, but we just put some constant string. Okay, so, you know, you know, building up, building up. So, you know, where does this get more interesting? So it gets more interesting when we start talking about scope and actually, you know, uh, capturing uh, a, variables by you know the scope so here we have i uh, will actually start explaining this bracket uh this bracket kind of notation here so this is really what uh what this function or what this lambda will capture from the outside scope so in this case um let's go ahead and simplify this a little so what this says is i want you to capture a from the outside scope so that a refers to this a up here that's just int a equals five and we have a b equals 10 right here. And this just says, I want you to capture a from the outside scope, uh, but it's going to be uh, read only, right? And so when we do this with like by reference with b, this says I want you to capture b, but it's not read only, so it's modifiable. So there's a couple other things we can do. 
So we can do equals as well. When we do equals, this says I want you to capture everything else, every other variable, and I want you to capture it as read only. Right, so I can access it within this lambda, but it's going to be read only. Uh, likewise, uh, when I have it here with two things, it says I want you to capture B as you know being being able to be you know modified, but everything else will be uh, read only. If I did this, it would be everything's read only, and then if I just did an ampersand, right, it would be everything's uh, able to be captured uh, as modifiable here, right? So. Um, so we can go ahead and show that here. So here, you know, we can modify B inside of a Lambda, uh, but you can see, I've, so I've got a checker inside of my, uh, inside of Vim here. So if I actually do this, we see that I get an error right here. So that's what these two lines over here represent. So I get an error and it says increment of read only variable A, right? So if I wanted to fix this, you know, and I wanted to modify A, I could do ampersand A there, right? And that should take away the error. But I don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and leave it like that. And then we can call capture lambda and we'll see that we update B, right? So, so fairly nice. Now let's see, you know, as up until this point, you might, you might've been thinking to yourself, this doesn't seem particularly useful. And for the examples that we've had, you're absolutely right. It's not useful at all. So let's see where it is useful. So let's take, uh, we want to use a uh, standard sort, right? So we want to sort, say, you know, we're used to sorting things like a list of integers or floating point numbers. But what if we actually have an object that we want to sort? Say we've got an object that's a building. In this case, it's a struct that has a name and a, uh, a number, the height of it, and say like feet associated with it. And so we'll just create a vector of buildings. So we'll create one that's a bank, a monument, a skyscraper, a library, an office in no particular order, right? So these aren't in ascending or descending order. They're just kind of in a random order. And say we want to sort this. So uh, so we'll go ahead and print out the unsorted list first. And then uh, we've got a lambda here, but let's, let's talk a little bit about sort first. So this sort, it, it's not a function that I've made. So this is part of the standard library. So this is actually, you know, standard uh, from the standard library sort from that namespace. Right? And so basically what it does is it will just sort things into uh, ascending order. But, you know, you might notice a problem here. So what if we pass it something that isn't very easy to sort, right? So, or rather, what if we pass it something that isn't, you know, immediately apparent how it should be sorted? So if we just pass it our own, you know, custom object, in this case, you know, you know, something that's a building, right? What should it be sorted by? Should it be sorted by name? Should it be sorted by um, uh, the height? No, the function can't tell that, right? It, can't, it, it doesn't really understand. So into sort, we can actually pass a sorting rule. So that's what we'll use this lambda for. So the lambda will actually be our sorting rule. It will do a Boolean, uh, it will return a, a Boolean value. So in this case, we'll call it a uh, sort rule and we won't capture anything, but it will take two things. So it'll take um, you know, a building one and a building two, and it will return a bool. And then all it will do is it will check the height. So it just checks to make sure that it's, you know, if it's less than, and it does a, you know, either returns true or false, right? And so that's what we can, uh, instead of, you know, sort, you know, built in just comparing two numbers using less than, we create a rule to access a field of the object, but the specific field that we want. Right, and we could even make this custom, right? Maybe we wanted to sort it by, uh, you know, alphabetical order, right? And so we could implement that inside of a lambda as well, and pass it into sort rule, and then sort will sort it based upon, you know, what this sorting rule returns back when it starts comparing the individual parts of this vector, or the individual objects stored in this vector, which are in this case are these buildings, right? So let's go ahead and uh, let's exit out of here. And let's compile this. So like always, we'll be using, using G++. We'll specify the C++11 standard. So uh, dash STD equals C++11. And then our output file will be lambdas. And then our input file will be lambdas.cpp. And let's go ahead and run it. So here we have starting out, you know, just the very basic ones. So here we just call it directly when we uh, create the lambda and then here we assign it to a variable and then we call it then over here we 
we pass in a constant string and then we return a double so we print both of those things here's where we're uh, we're actually you know capturing scope right and so we're passing in this b we're capturing this scope b by uh by reference right so we can modify it and a is read only so we just leave it as is here's our pre-sorted list of buildings and you see we can use some of these algorithms inside of the standard library that are already implemented and pretty darn good um, and we can use them on you know our own custom objects as long as we give it you know uh, a rule to evaluate in this case you know we sorted things in ascending order but you know we can modify this as well right so let's let's show what that would look like so let's open up lambdas again so let's say I wanted to sort it in descending order right so it's actually pretty easy right? so I can just change the rule to be greater than rather than less than I can remake uh, lambdas and I can do it again right and so now it's in descending order right so it starts at 808 goes to 542 234 200 145 so it allows us to you know do you know use these sorting algorithms but kind of in a more custom way and a more flexible way okay so that's really going to do it for you know this basic introduction to lambdas there's a lot more things that I haven't covered here and you know particularly use cases we might use it in but here we just kind of showed off a couple ways we can specify a lambda as well as you know some practical ways we can use a lambda as always feel free to check out all this code on uh, github.com slash coffee before arch uh, you know we've got code for a whole bunch of different series here uh, we looked at C++ Crash Course today, and so I've got all of the, uh, the other videos linked here, as well as the files related to those videos. So down here, we've got this Lambdas example, right? And so feel free to download this as well and play around with it. You know, let me know if you have any questions. My contact information, as always, is up here. And then hopefully in the near future, I'll be able to finish the rest of these um, written tutorials. So if you don't want to, you know, maybe you, you think my voice is annoying and you don't want to hear me talk well you can still get the same kind of guidance and explanations through these written uh, tutorials that are going to be in pdfs but like i said that's going to do it for today i'm nick from coffee before arch and i hope you have a nice day